So welcome to Beauty of Holiness with Prophet Kajal. Today our topic is sandpapers. Yeah, sandpapers, those people that we love so much. But let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We just trust, Lord, that whoever is watching is going to be touched and changed by today's message. That people in our daily lives will no longer affect us negatively the way they do currently. That the light of your truth will shine in the dark areas of our soul, our spirit, our mind, our will, our emotions. And we will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And we bind the devil from stealing the truth of God's word today or interfering in any way, shape, or form in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, so sandpapers. What are sandpapers? Hmm, let's find out. You know those people in our lives who hurt us and offend us, the people that say nasty things to us in a joking way, the people that pick up in an area of our lives where we are struggling, the ones that say things that make us feel like we're drawing and hiding, the ones that undermine our decisions and behaviors, the ones that hinder our growth and success. These people are sandpapers. They rub us the wrong way. Do you have people like this in your life? Maybe at work, there's somebody that's always saying the wrong thing. Or maybe you're single and you go to a family gathering and there's always that one auntie or person that says, when you're getting married, you're getting old. Um, or they pick on that one thing in your life that is already a wound for you. And that's the thing that they keep on addressing and keep on mocking and making a joke of. How do you handle these people? Currently, some of you might be getting very offended and hurt and upset and angry and getting angry with God and coming home from work and crying about it. Well, today we're going to give you tools how to handle such people and how to protect your own heart. Because you cannot control the other person's behavior, but you can control the way you feel about them. And if you get this right, oh, your life will be so much easier and happier. Especially family. Family is hard to get away from. At least work, you can change your job. You can, you're not gonna see them like, you know, in a, in a, in a nice, happy environment. You only see them at work. But the people that are in your life all the time that annoy you, that hurt your heart and hurt your feelings and hurt your emotions, how do you handle these people? Well, let's find out. Why, first of all, why does God allow sandpapers in our lives? Because if you did our prophetic workshop, you'll know fruit is developed under pressure. What is fruit, Prophet Kajal? Well, Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So these people are in your life to develop fruit, good fruit. Because if you're not developing fruit, God says he'll cut off that branch and throw it into the fire. So you need to bear fruit. So God allows these people in our lives for us to bear fruit. What fruit will we bear when we have such annoying people in our lives? Well, first of all, you will learn how to love the unlovable. You will learn how to have joy in the midst of a difficult situation. You will learn to have peace in your heart, even though this person is like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a person like that. I worked with this person for 10 years of my life. Terrible, terrible. You will learn how to have patience. While in this situation, you will learn how to have patience. You will learn to be kind to the unkind. You will learn to be good to those who are horrible to you. You will learn to be faithful to your job and not quit and run away from this dragon or this monster or this person, the sandpaper. You will learn to be gentle. You will learn to have self-control and not let it affect you. How do I do this? It's irritating. This person annoys me. Well, let's find out. Now, John 15, 1 says, if you read the whole chapter of John 15, he talks about, Jesus talks about being divine. We are the branches that live on the vine and the branches bear fruit, bear grapes, big, large clusters of grapes. But God the Father is the vine dresser. So God the Father prunes the vine so that the branches bear more fruit. 
Now, John 15, 1 says, I am the true vine, that's Jesus, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So these people are pruning tools so that even more fruit will be made. People are God's pruning tools to make us bear more fruit. God's not going to come with his shears and cut off your ears. He's going to use people to cut off the hardness in your heart. He's going to use people to chisel all the unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment and offense in our hearts. This is how we become holy, by getting rid of the chef, getting rid of the dead stuff, getting rid of the things that don't bear good fruit. So these people in our lives that hurt us, mock us, criticize us, say wrong things, rub us the wrong way, make us hurt in our emotions, God is just using them to shape and build our character. God is more interested in your character than your comfort because this earth is a temporary situation. Eternity is forever. Forever is a very long time. But it hurts. Yes, it hurts. If you think of a wooden table like the one you see, the wood needs to be sandpapered. Now, when that sandpapering has happened, what do you think is happening to the wood? The wood is feeling that pain, the wood is feeling the scratch, the wood is feeling that roughness, that hurting. But what's happening to the wood in the process? The wood is also getting smooth. The wood will have a beautiful finish when it's done. The wood will shine. The wood will be admired and used for a good purpose. So just like that with you, with the people that hurt and offend and upset you, guess what's happening to your character? As you learn how to deal with them, as you learn how to overcome, as you learn how to choose the word of God over your feelings, you are shining, you are growing, you are maturing. There's beauty coming out of your heart, and that's the beauty of holiness, that you can endure under such terrible circumstances. What is the result of pruning? Look at this table. This is a beautiful piece of wood. Look at the shine of this wood. But it didn't start like this. It started as a piece of tree trunk that needed to be polished, needed to be sandpapered, needed to be smoothed out. Maybe they use an the angle grinder to get rid of the rough edges. That's a painful process, but look at the end product. And just like that, as you learn to overcome and as you learn how to deal with these people, you will shine like a pure vessel of God, a vessel of honor unto Jesus. So how do I deal with sandpapers in my life? First of all, you've got to forgive them immediately. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 13, be gentle and ready to forgive. In other words, as soon as they say that hurtful thing, as soon as they pick on you, as soon as they make that mocking remark, as soon as they do that hurtful thing, forgive them in your heart. I forgive this person. Don't let it hurt you. As soon as you see them throwing that knife, you stop it with a shield of faith. And say, I will not take offense. I will not let this arrow, you know, the Psalms 91, the arrows that fly by day, people's words, those are words. Use your shield of faith to stand against those arrows and say, no, you will not penetrate my heart. You have the power over your own life. You have control over what hurts you and what doesn't hurt you. You have the power. Don't give the other person power. Oh, this person is hurting me. No, you're allowing it. Don't allow it. The Bible says, be gentle and ready to forgive. Never hold grudges. It's the grudges that turn into bitterness, and bitterness has a terrible root which can give you cancer. So don't allow it to grow. The Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Daily we sin against God, and he is so gracious and forgives us. So let's forgive the sandpapers immediately. Yes, they're horrible, and sometimes your flesh does not want to forgive them. Remember, forgiving them is not to help them. It's to help you. We've got a good teaching on how to get rid of unforgiveness. So as soon as you feel the sting in your heart, forgive them immediately. And you know what that does? It stops the rest of the hurt and the pain and the bitterness and the mulling over it and churning it like butter and keep thinking about it and you wounded and what this person said and look how they treat me and and, 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 and and you know what you're doing you're making that thing bigger in your mind don't catch that train second one don't take offense 
we have a choice. Are we going to get offended by these sandpapers or are we, are we just going to let it go? Proverbs 19, 11 says, good sense makes one slow to anger. Good sense, meaning wisdom, makes one slow to anger. And it is his glory to overlook an offense. You will be glorified and honored if you overlook it. Ignore it. Ecclesiastes 7.21, do not take heart. Do not take to heart all the things that people say. People will say things. You don't have to accept everything they say. Have filters in your life. Have a sieve in front of you that their stuff doesn't penetrate that filter, that, that protection. You must have boundaries. You must not allow things that hurt you to come into your heart. You have the power to do that. Three, hand them over to God. The Bible says in Romans 12, 19, do not take revenge. So do not try and now hurt them back or punish them back or expose their sin. Hand it over to God. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. So give them over to God. Say, Father, this person is hurting me. They're saying these negative things about me. I cancel their words in Jesus' name, and I hand them over to you. And then trust that God will take care of it. Trust God. You can trust God. Four, pray for them. Romans 12, 14. Bless those who hurt you. Ooh. Romans 12, 14. Bless those who hurt you. Bless them. Do not call down curses on them. Don't curse the people that hurt you. Bless them. That's the word. In, in, in Matthew, it also says the words of Jesus. Bless those who despitefully use you. This is how you grow in character. This is how you get rewards from God. You don't get rewards from God when you curse people that hurt you. You get rewarded by God when you bless them. Bless them. I bless this horrible person. <laughs> God will reward you. Five, find the devil from using them to hurt you. Matthew 18, 18, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So you say, I bind the devil that is operating through person X, Y, Z to attack me. And I forbid them from using this person to attack me anymore. And I command their mouths to be shut against me in Jesus' name. Easy peasy, take dominion over your life. Ephesians 6, 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. You're not fighting the person. You're fighting the devil that's using them. Obviously, their lives are not right. So they allow the devil to come in and attack. And this is what will happen. So the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and the forces of evil in high places. So they are helping you to grow. Can you believe that they're actually helping you to grow? Know that they are helping you to grow. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. So this is a trial in your life, this person. But if you remain steadfast, forgive them, bless them, love them. Don't let, it, don't let it get into your heart. You are blessed. You will receive the crown of life. God will reward you. 1 Peter 2, 19 to 20 says, For this is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrow while suffering unjustly. It's a gracious thing. For what credit is it if when you sin, you're beaten for it and you endure? But if you are good, if you're doing good and suffer for it, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. In other words, if you're suffering for nothing, you will get blessed. But if you're suffering because you deserve it, then there's no blessing for that. You're just deserving what you got. But am I deserving of a person being ugly to me? No. So if you endure under that trial, you will get blessed. What will happen to the sandpapers? You see this picture here. Sandpaper, if as you use the sandpaper to smooth out the table, that sandpaper gets worn out. But what happens to you? You get shiny and beautiful. 
Colossians 3 25 says, For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. And what a man sows, he will also reap. So these people are sowing negative things into their own lives. Leave them to God, they're not your responsibility. Work out your own salvation. So the sandpaper gets worn out, not you. So you might be thinking, This person's hurting me, and they're laughing about it, and na 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 na. They're getting worn out. You getting changed from glory to glory. That's what happens. Keep a sweet spirit and trust God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So you must rejoice. Say, Lord, I thank you for this person that's hurting me and upsetting me. I give thanks for them. I bless them in Jesus' name. John 15, 12. This is my commandment that you love one another. So you say, I love this person. If you can't do it, in your flesh you say by faith i love this person i just release love to them say it because if you say it it, it will it will help you because you're hearing yourself say it but if you think it your brain's gonna say you don't love this person just say it anyway Isaiah 41 10 and here's the, the beauty of god fear not for i am with you when this person is attacking you when you're feeling upset and overwhelmed and afraid and small and insecure Trust God. He says, I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Dismayed means do not be sad and disillusioned and upset. I am your God. Trust God. He's your God. I will strengthen you. He will give you inner strength. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Trust God. He's with you. He's with you when this person is rubbing you the wrong way. He's with you when you are feeling hurt and upset. Trust him. Call out to him. Reach out to him and receive. Receive that love and that acceptance from your father in heaven. Be of good cheer. Next time you come in contact with these people, remember, they have their own issues. Why are they rude and obnoxious? Because they have their own issues. They have not dealt with their stuff. Now they want to take it out on you and boost their ego and make themselves feel good. That's not godly. They must deal with their stuff. It's not your business and not your problem. When they sense that they can't get to you anymore, they will back off. You know, people like a reaction. If you don't react, they will just back off because it's boring for them. Just say, no, don't engage arguments. Walk away. Or say what you need to say and walk away. Say it with love and respect. When the devil sees that you're not getting flustered and upset and crying and bawling your eyes out, he will also back off. But as long as he can poke you and you react, he'll keep poking you because that's what he does. You need to be strong and stop it. You will have passed the offense test and win that battle. You know, every battle you win is a victory, a feather in your cap, a reward from God and building and strengthening of your character. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to know God. God is an amazing God. And once you overcome this and win this battle, my friend, life becomes easier. You need to be the bigger person. You need to be stronger. You need to be wise and recognize what is going on. Recognize that your battle is not people. Your battle is the devil. Even if it's your family member, a relative, you say, whatever spirit is operating through this person to attack me, I bind you in Jesus' name. You will not work through this person to hurt me, upset me, you know, all those negative things. It works. It works. Why? Because the word of God works. And God is for you. God's not against you. So I trust that this teaching is going to help you and make you grow and go from glory to glory. And all will be well with you. And I bless you in Jesus' name.